Heidi, howdy, howdy, this is JL, and I'm here to talk about Shonen Jump Sunday. I'm just a normal, average, normal dude, uh, he, him pronouns, just uh, wanted to discuss my uh, thoughts on the latest comics from Shonen Jump. This is Sunday, February 12th, 2023, and uh, how I'm kind of going through things, I read them from newest series to oldest, though I always pull One Piece first because One Piece comes first. So, I just want to have my little discussion with y'all and uh, throw my proverbial hat into the ring. So, here are my thoughts on the series so far. Starting out, we're going to come up with One Piece 1074. Wow, it's been going on that long. Anyway, uh, this chapter was called PX3. We're introduced and we're really reintroduced to the pacifist units on the Ed Hague Island, kind of seeing how Centamaro is taking his, I guess, firing? Or, you know, essentially re doing his duty the proper way. Uh, we're kind of going through this little symbol. It's a very uh, build up each chapter where we're slowly getting gathering the crew together, but we're also looking into the mystery of how the Stella version of Dr. Vegapump disappeared. We're also kind of showing a little bit of the backstory for good old Kuma as he's still climbing Marajoa. So it's very much a tense chapter, and I'm really looking forward to the next issue. One Piece continues to be my favorite series for a reason, and it's because it's always so damn fun. All right, next up on the docket is Zhangxi X, Chapter 4. This series is really, really trying my patience. So, so far, we've gotten four chapters in, and we're basically only having three primary characters, whose names I'm really not going to remember anytime soon. Um, but so far, you know, we've fought, like, two Jiangxi this entire series, and they've just beaten their second, a second-form Jiangxi, and now they're introducing a third, and it's a giant snaky-looking one. So there's a pretty clear show that we're going to probably get a okay, new character coming in to save them from this third level Zhangxi. There's probably no real good reason they would actually win, so we're sort of going through the numbers here. It's not really it's not really that interesting. The art's fairly decent. I'm not going to not going to uh, knock it. It's competent in its executions. Just very standard. Um uh I am definitely feel like, like it's aping off of Naruto a little bit too hard in general visual design. Uh, but again, I want to see the series continue and see where it grows. See what like the real gimmick of the story is going to be. Because so far, just Jiangxi being villains seems a little... tame. Alright, Fabricant 100, Chapter 9. Ah... Ah, oh, that was fun. All right, so we're introduced to the villain group this time. We're kind of seeing the sort of dark parallel to the main story where the 100 Fabricant, you know, partnering up with the main kid, who, again, I have not memorized these names yet, uh, you know, what would the dark reflection of that be? So we get the singer, or the not singer, wanting to sing and making a partnership with this one this one fabricant, but as soon, as soon as that boy's blood even is in whiff distance, she betrays her. It is fabulous. It's very, very visceral. Like, it just amazing page turn. The art is doing wonders for this. Keeping it very round, bubbly, but at the same time, sharp and dirty with the blood. So, again, appreciate it a lot. I really hope it gets farther. So far, we're kind of getting Monster of the Week style with these Fabricants, and that's fine. Uh, we really are going to get another ally Fabricant. It doesn't feel like for a while, but I'm very much engaged with the narrative and the little mini tragedy that's happening here. So, good job. I really look forward to the next chapter. All right, Ichigoki's Under Control, Chapter 10. This was a fun little gag. I uh, appreciate the little Yakuza references and uh, the general vibe of it. Not a lot to say about a gag manga that's, you know, it's the jokes that are most important. 
though I can kind of suspect we're kind of building the classroom a little bit. We've introduced the teacher now and his laid back, you know, who cares mentality. Things are going to happen whatever the way they happen. And clearly the cast is supposed to kind of, you know, work with him unintentionally to get that sort of ending possible. It's fun. I don't really have any major gripes about it. The art's kind of ugly, but I think that's sort of the point. It's supposed to be sort of ugly to kind of mimic the jokes and the the try-hard nature of the general background characters. So again, I, I appreciate it. I hope it does well. I've seen gag mangas on this list that I'm going to be talking about later that do just the same thing and have succeeded immensely. So I'm, again, looking forward to it. All right, on to Cypher Academy, Chapter 11. God damn it. Word diarrhea is just the only note I have for this. Jesus Christ. All right. I will always read the newest pulls for the series, uh, for Shonen Jump. That's just my kind of goal when it comes to making material. But God damn it. Cypher Academy is such a wall of text. Like... Generally, the idea of like this, these are ciphers, these are supposed to be like these little word puzzles that you figure out and re realize so you can, you know, get information, wartime, and this definitely plays on that idea, kind of like being a sort of Yu-Gi-Oh, like early Yu-Gi-Oh style narrative where it's like, oh, what's the puzzle, how are they going to figure it out, but at the same time, early Yu-Gi-Oh also had like, you know, like vodka duels where you would basically have to light a, light a lighter and not die and this is just like you know two high schoolers you know having a word game fight where they ask each other questions and the end result is either expulsion or partnership which is like the stakes aren't really that high and yet we're like supposed to kind of infer through this massive wall of text that like something impressive happened Again, I understand there's some people who are impressed by the the ciphers and the tricks and things they have to do to make these ciphers work or make these like conversations work, but damn, it does not translate well. And I am I am not regretting starting the series, but I am starting to see like I really hope it doesn't get popular because it's seriously if this continues, it is just going to be like entire comics that are just text, and I, mm, it is a little bit too much. The Ichinose Family's Deadly Sins, Chapter 12. Yeah, we're kind of getting further into the mystery here, where we're slowly discovering the possible mystery behind the father, quote-unquote, uh, sin, which might be a second family, and maybe the mother's sin of misunderstanding, where she's seeing the the father figure and thinking, oh god, he has a second family. He's been lying. Though, of course, we as the audience know that he's not. He's just visiting to make, uh, to be nice. Though, at the same time, we're not 100% sure he, that's actually true. He might actually have had a second family. And we're slow, we're slowly starting to get understand, uh, get more information about the, the circumstances. And I like how the, the mother's like say, saying to the kid, back off. I think it's better that you don't know. Like, she must bear the idea, but also that she must not remember it. it it's it's dark. It's it's foreboding. I love it. The art is very, very sketchy, but also really detailed in places. Just kind of to emphasize the true, like, separation between the two sides of the, uh, of the scenario, the mother and the father. So, again, I look forward to it. I... Really, I love the twist from earlier, and I'm sort of wanting to see where this goes from here, like where this kind of mystery ends up. Because if it's supernatural, I'm going to be a little upset. I want it to be a little more grounded, but at the same time, hey, you can't, you can't, you can't fight good, good writing and good art. So, hey, there you go. All right, jumping in numbers here, Ginka and Luna, chapter twenty-one. Ah, uh, the the fight. Th they're fighting thugs. And yeah, the thugs are pretty basic, you know, one's a magician who, you know, casts spells while the other is the big brute who goes around and stomps flowers, the jerk. So we, we're kind of getting Luna and uh, the the knight that she's gained 
and we get a little bit of the backstory on Sasuke. I've just kind of noted him as Sasuke because his origin's basically the same, except, you know, the guy who attacked him, we don't know if it's his brother yet. Gonna, like, just gonna say no, but hey, you, you never know when they're gonna pull up kind of uh, story shenanigans. Either way, the ending was extreme. Oh my god, she is turbo dead. Um... Again, which is cool, we're kind of getting a violent series, you know, we're kind of as we've moved forward through the list here, we've gotten from, like, you know, generally okay, mild comedy, you know, no no, oh, no harsh stuff, maybe some dark things, no, just straight up violence, Luna murders that girl, god damn. So, hey, again, fantastic, I really hope Genka and Luna gets, gets more to it, because I, it, so far it's been a fun little quick narrative, no, no wasting time getting from one point to the other i think it's a generally good story so hey next on the docket is tokyo demon bride story chapter 22 surprisingly not the final chapter i think it might be the next one or the uh the following this one was basically just kind of wrapping up a few things uh, some kind of building up some tension between our main character and the main girl kind of getting closer together i'm Gonna not remember these names, because they're probably not gonna be important too soon. This series feels like it's about to uh, get ended. Now, granted, I really shouldn't be putting too much pull to the website, but it has always been at the very bottom for weeks. I mean, there are other series I'm looking at down there that I'm like, man, I don't read any of these things, and yet it's sitting there, and those things have fluctuated, they've gone up, they've gone down, and this has stayed straight at the bottom. So, and it's sort of been at the bottom. This one's a little depressing, because we kind of get a picture of like what the other characters are doing at the time they keep losing their jobs it's like here are these girls who try their best to live in modern society and they've already been fired Ooh, it's rough and also the mystery of oh the girl disappeared okay cool we're gonna have like either a rescue arc or some kind of small like oh uh, she you know it was been gone for years she shows up later one day and she's like declares that she's in love with him again and you know it's all, it's all that i'm not really looking forward to the ending, but at the same time, I'm like it's kind of clear this is getting this is gonna get canned soon. So, hey, I look forward to a new series starting real soon. All right, here's to the Shonen Jump cover comic, Akanebanashi, chapter forty nine. We're getting a color cover for the one year anniversary. Oh, it's so good. Uh, and this was the uh, ending of the fetching tea arc. Great story. Akane killed it. Just great little narrative. Honestly, like, again, the series always surprises me with not only the art, but the general writing and the change of tone. Like, we really, like, we were supposed to, we were engaged so much in the Rakugo, the comic literally changes its format, its design, just to kind of illustrate what it's like to listen to a Rakugo story. So, like, Chef's Kiss, it's, it's gorgeous. I love the color spread at the beginning, so we get color designs for the... Uh, soon to be anime hopefully i mean it's probably not gonna be for like another year but hey man i'm looking forward to it i really like a strong female character i love the fact we got more of them in the series because we kind of had like a girl with a lot of guys who are moderately interesting but not as interesting as her but akane killing this role again i'm remembering her name because she's worth it so all right now for the next major jump in numbers uh blue box Chapter eighty-eight. <laughs> All right, so now we're now we're learning more about the old rivalry and what it really means. You know, we're starting to see that uh, Chinatsu really, really does love her friend, and her friend really does love her, but doesn't know how to express it and doesn't know how to really, you know, get out of this funk of just trying to get Chinatsu to slow the fuck down because that's what Chinatsu is doing. She's just so involved in her basketball career. I mean, she is coming after you, LeBron. She is going to un unthrone you. She will be the queen. God damn it, I fucking love Chinatsu's just basketball references. Uh, also, I need to brock off a piece of that caught cat bar. Yeah, I know, the tense moments between, especially uh, just that, that little bit between Taiki and uh, Hina, uh, Hina there, the, the beginning, or really the middle, we're like, oh, wow, um, yeah, she's moving on, thank God, uh, but at the same time, hey, I like a little tension in my romance, so, good, good series, this is getting to 88, it's 
almost to its year mark, uh, second year mark. So, hey, good on you, uh, good on you, Blue Box, for continuing being awesome. All right, I'm going to confess, I've never actually read Skit Dance, but I think I'm going to have to after this uh, this chapter of Witch Watch, chapter 96, which is you know, celebrating their uh, second year anniversary because, well, this has survived two years for a, you know, non-standard gag series, but hey, it's by a veteran of the of the craft, and this was a great little chapter. You know, a heartwarming little ending where it's like, oh, the students just really wanted their friend to come back, and they know they missed her, and that she has a place, even though she feels embarrassed about the entire event, and uh, and that's that's really cool. And again, just the little skit dance thing, again, don't get the references, but at the same time, it has a more interesting little flow to it. I'm opening the note. Uh, uh, we'll we'll read. Uh, we'll definitely have to read. But better cipher than Cipher Academy, because it is. It's just such a simple but at the same time effective cipher uh, that's a little more interesting and a little more personable than the ones in that series. So hey, I sort. I am looking forward to seeing where this the Witch Watch will go with the next little mini arc, kind of working towards the the big confrontation in the next month. Um, so hey, uh, again, good looking, good looking series. Very heart warmed moment here at the end. All right, next up we got Sakamoto Days, chapter one hundred six. Uh, we're kind of getting a build up here. Uh, we're making plans, getting the getting the band together. You know, bringing in Shin and and Taro to go uh, go on down to Thailand, learning English on the plane ride there. So. Uh, you know, building up some tension here. And also we're getting a throwback to one of the first chapters, the shop fight. Uh, it was wonderful to see Shin and uh, Taro kind of tangle for a little bit, though that was not very long. And, you know, of course, you know, Taro's wife is best wife because she's like, no, no, sort your shit out. I'm stealing your, I'm stealing your passports. You ain't leaving. And now we're kind of getting into the backstory between Taro and Slur. So, this is going to be interesting to see where, why, why he does actually have a bounty on his head. Why did Slur go out of his way to attack Sakamoto when, really, he has nothing to do with his future plans. He wasn't going to be in the game at all. Why, why'd you bring back John Wick? Like, why'd you kill his dog? It's a bad idea. So anyway, uh, no, the art is still amazing. I'm really looking forward to the backstory. I kind of want to see more outlandish fights, but that's how the series rolls, so... Hey, let's let's see how it goes. I'm gonna have to jump around my notes a bit, and this is specifically a reason. Now I pulled from Shonen Jump, and I've been reading Shonen Jump comics was as they've been pulled, and I continued them until they ca get canceled. Essentially, like you know, if I start a series, I will read it until cancellation, unless I really don't want to read it or I drop it. There are very rare drops I've had that are from series. I will admit I've read three chapters of Elusive Samurai and said I'm waiting for the anime on that one. And honestly, I looked at PPPPP and went, mm, no, just not for me. It's probably it's probably going to be good, but I don't really want to read it. So I will say I did start a series, but it left Shonen Jump. It didn't end. So I continue reading it on Manga Plus, and that is Ayakashi Triangle, chapter 120. I am not ashamed of this. Um, and well, we're, we're getting further into the little narrative between the two uh, Matsuris, you know, split up and like one girl, one boy, though we're really, it's sort of like we're kind of in this strange, you know, m maximum clonage story arc here, though we're taking a, a you know, sideline to fight off a new foreign uh, Ayakashi, which I either believe it's a, is a Gorgon or a Cockatrice. I'm sort of hoping for a Cockatrice because it, it would be hilarious to see like this, this, bundle of snakes with with a chicken a chicken attached to it but at the same time it's probably a probably a gorgon probably a big-titted gorgon because the series is pretty much throwing its tits out in front of you and saying hey look at him um but hey it's definitely less skeevy than the other works by the same artist not the same writer thankfully uh i don't think we need more of to love ruth thank you very much so no um uh, it's fun it's definitely less less uh, risque than normal chapters, but hey, they've pulled out the made outfits. I think we're all doomed. All right, going back to the actual Shonen Jump pulls, uh, 
high school family. I refuse to say the subtitle, it means the exact same thing. Uh, chapter 121. <laughs> this is just a short, dumb chapter to, to, you know, illustrate a point. Amnesia is a dumb trope. But hey, it's fun to see the father, you know, lose his memory and everyone just coming together to say, hey, we remember you. You're a high schooler. He's like, yeah, I'm a high schooler. Breaks his back, forgets his memory again. <laughs> Uh, it's it's also fun to see Kotaro getting really pissed off. Like you have you have spent a hundred twenty one chapters telling me you're a high school student, and now you forget. <laughs> very very fun. A uh, little uh, fun little, little gag. Not a lot to say. Uh, the art was good. The well, the art was pretty terrible actually. It's you know it's not supposed to look good. It's supposed to look gag worthy, and it definitely uh, definitely achieves that. So again. Not bad. It's it's lived this long, so it's it, it's got to be working for somebody, and it's working for me. All right, last we'll be doing Undead Unluck Chapter One Forty Six. We're building the squad. We're getting together to fight in good old Southern China seas. Uh, this is going to be a fun little arc. We're getting unseen, unbreakable, and undraw drawn into the uh, the the fray here by Fuko, who continues to be one of the best characters in the series. Again, while Andy is definitely the poster child, Fuko definitely stands out on her own, as well as just kind of working uh, uh, with the pit cast. You know, you could assume she's a Mary Sue, but considering the rest, the rest of the story, the previous bad and the story arc, it's fun to see like how we're kind of going forward with the narrative. I mean, we're really changing the fate of all these characters. We're having un uh, unbreakable, you know, becoming the old man version, that, like you know. The original was the subversion. It's like, under the suit of armor, it's actually a really cute girl. And now it's like, under the armor, it's a really old man. You know, like, a guy who probably wouldn't be wearing this armor. So, you know, the subversion has become just the version. Uh, and also, unseen. Oh, uh, jeez. Uh, yeah, he, he he certainly met his end last time. Ooh, boy. But yeah, no, it, it continues to be good. I'm really looking forward to see how they bring in Billy and and all them to the new arc and how, how it all, you know, culminates in the big squad fighting God, because God deserves it. He's he's done some bad things. And that'll do it for this week. Uh, there's only one, you know, manga that didn't actually update, and that was uh, My Hero Academia. The second week in a row. Hope Horikoshi's okay, but it's probably a senioritis. He's about to end a series, so he's like, ah, I'm just gonna stretch this out. Ah, I'm just gonna miss this assignment. That's fine. But yeah, eh, overall, this is just a little fun experiment I'm doing, just trying to post something on YouTube, had this YouTube profile for a while, haven't made a video on it for so many years. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. If you do find this, I don't know how you would. YouTube is a cluster of various different sorts. Anyway, have fun, y'all. Good night.